Uh, my name is Dr Carrie Winstanley and I became an assessor for Roehampton University's institutional scheme through gaining my National Teaching Fellowship in 2008. Oh, okay, can I go and get something then? This is how I feel equipped, look. <laughs> Here. <laughs> here in my office <laughs> and everywhere um, and certainly when I'm doing the assessment I've got the UK PSF framework standards and we use this religiously um, when we're assessing claims uh, so I always have a reference to that uh, and certainly um, when we're on the panel if if we're in any way uncertain about somebody's application or we want to check somebody's always got a copy of that with them so we can go back and refer to what it says We go again back to this document. <laughs> this is the one that we use. Um, it's really helpful for us. But also the panel's made up of a range of different people who come from different parts of the university and have different roles within the university. So everybody brings their own perspective to bear, their personal perspective, but also their roles perspective. This is trickier. This is the third take because this is hard to get right, okay? <laughs> I'm being honest now. So the difficulty with this is that you've got to show impact of your leadership. And that means that you need to show how colleagues have adapted or changed their practice as a result of something that you may have initiated. Uh, and if it so happens that your academic role doesn't involve strategic leadership because you're not actually leading a programme, you have to demonstrate how you've led your, your team, that's the team that's closest around you. Um, and that can be quite difficult, um, but it's not impossible. And certainly the submissions that we've seen that have shown excellence at senior and principal fellowship level are people who've managed to step beyond their role and actually get involved in some sort of strategy uh, that isn't obviously linked to what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. When it comes to writing the submission, what you have to do is be really clear about your understanding of leadership, your view of leadership, your thoughts on leadership, uh, perhaps your philosophy of leadership, if that doesn't sound too grand. And you need to make that explicit in the submission. Okay, so in terms of colleagues who've written really great stuff that's reflective and what's a really good example of reflective practice is where I think they've kind of closed the loop with things. So they've come up with something that they've thought about and then shown how reflecting on it has maybe adjusted their practice or what they intend to do and how they intend to do it, but in quite a kind of real and practical way, not in a pie in the sky way. Sometimes it comes across in somebody's submission whether they're really passionate about what they do or whether they're perhaps treating the application rather more as a paper exercise where uh, they're doing it because they've been requested or they're required to. Um, and certainly when it comes to feedback for those people I think the issue there is to try and rethink why they're undertaking the, the process in the first place and not to think of it just as a paper exercise but actually as something that is uh, fundamental about the role that they have, the job that they do, the, who they are, their identity as an academic. It's just really inspiring to be conscious of the range and diversity of different practice that we've got across the university. Uh, and also, you get to understand a lot about different roles within higher education. Um, and it's quite easy to end up working in a bit of a bubble in your own department, but being on the panels allowed me to stretch out beyond the School of Education where I work to look at business and anthropology and film and dance and all sorts of other rich areas. Mm -hmm.